Hi, I'm John Nash, and welcome to Cafe UCEA. It's not uncommon for a group of constituents who represent a common interest to visit Washington, D.C. to engage members of the legislature on topics of great importance to the group. The UCEA PEA Day on the Hill event provides just such an opportunity. It will involve meeting with members of Congress or their staff and various professional associations to discuss quality leadership, preparation, and evaluation, particularly for those schools that receive ESEA funding. Today we're going to talk about how to make the most out of an upcoming UCEA PEA Day on the Hill, specifically how to tell your story and how to communicate effectively with legislators and staffers on the Hill. We're here today with Isaiah McGee and Bradley Carpenter and Sonia Horsford. Isaiah is a new UCEA graduate student council member from the University of Iowa who previously worked for the Iowa Department of Education as a policy and equity consultant. Hi, Isaiah. <coughs> Hi. Uh, Bradley is a former UCEA graduate assistant who took a leadership role in planning the first UCEA Day on the Hill and founded the Congressional Education Organization Student Advocates for Graduate Education, or SAGE. He's currently an assistant professor at the University of Louisville in the Department of Leadership Foundations and Human Development. Good morning. Good morning. And Sonia is an associate professor in the School of Education at George Mason University, as well as a member of the Day on the Hill Planning Committee. She's originally from Las Vegas, where her husband serves as the U.S. Representative for Nevada's 4th District. Hi, Sonia. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thanks to you all for coming. So I think one of the first things that I would want to know if I were participating is, what is a visit like? Um, what happens during one of these visits? Well, I, I guess I'll start with, with a little bit of that and a little bit of the conversation behind these visits. Uh, in my experience in the past, uh, what typically happens is you, you come through, there's usually, and this is the same way we have our setup, we have some type of orientation to make sure that we're all on the same page, and then you get to the hills, those meetings should have already been set up uh, with, uh, with the individual uh, congressmen and congresswomen uh, ahead of time. You go in, you have about 15 minutes to, uh, uh, to, to talk about your issue, and, uh, and then you move on to, to the next thing. It, it seems like a very short period of time, uh, but a lot can happen within that 15 minutes. Uh, oftentimes, you're, you, know, you come in and there's uh, a lot of hustle and bustle that's already going on. Uh, maybe there's a vote that's uh, uh, being cast. So you may have to wait a few minutes here or there to actually speak with uh, uh, the congressman or woman or, or their staff. Uh, and, and that's actually an important point to, to mention too. You may not necessarily uh, meet with the uh, with the representative uh, or the senator. Uh, you actually may be meeting with their staff, and sometimes that can actually be uh, just as effective, if not more effective, than actually meeting with uh, with the representative. I see. So, um, do you have suggestions on how participants should prepare for these kinds of visits in advance? Uh, well, I think. Uh, uh, the staff at, at UCAA, Aaron, and, and everyone else has done a, a really good job of trying to uh, make sure we're all prepared um, and has made sure that we have the, uh, the, the resources and things that we need to do to, uh, to be prepared for this particular uh, event. So uh, making sure we've read up on uh, different legislation that may be affecting us, uh, such as the, the, the reauthorization of the Elementary Secondary Education Act, uh, looking at other uh, other issues that also may uh, affect our, maybe our particular institutions. Uh, knowing those types of things will also always be very helpful. Knowing what may be the dynamics or the situations that are going on. For instance, we are uh, headed to the Hill uh, very a uh, very soon after a, a an election. Uh, so uh, some some members, some representatives are leaving. Uh, some of them are will be continuing on. Some of them will be moving into different positions, different committee chairmanships, or different roles. Uh, so knowing the dynamic and knowing what the atmosphere in, uh, is will also be very, very helpful. Um, Sonia or Bradley, do you have suggestions on preparing for a visit? I've never, for instance, been to a Day on the Hill event. So um, what should I be thinking about as I prepare for uh, heading up there? Well, I would just, um, I think that Isaiah pointed out some really important points, and that's one, understanding the, the dynamics, um, particularly right after an election. An election um, there'll be a lot of um, transition happening um, and movement, whether it is in terms of um, 
new members taking office or um, now serving on different committees. And so becoming familiar with what happened in the election, um, the committees that your particular member serves on is also important, and whether or not they are on an education committee or one that's directly connected to some of the issues that we're concerned about um, at UCEA. Um, and then also um, being very brief and knowing exactly what points you want to deliver when you meet with a member. They do have many issues um, that they're constantly managing um, and being updated on. So being very clear and succinct, as I know most professors are, uh, and using that time wisely, and uh, making sure that I would even suggest that there's some um, a follow-up meeting or event or something that you could help facilitate to make sure that you're able to continue contact with someone in the staff. Um, will be very important to ensure that you're continuing that relationship and having something that you can follow up on. Yeah, um, I think both folks have addressed a lot of the key issues. Besides, you know, the idea is to typically not have more than three points, uh, but certainly being on time. But some of the informal things that I've seen help us be successful in the past is if you're going with a group or two or three people, to rehearse who will be hitting which points before you get into the room. So, you know, so-and-so has point A, then point B, then point C. That way everybody has an opportunity to share and visit. Uh, but it's also rehearsed and it doesn't seem discombobulated. The other thing is, um, within the after hitting those three big points, I think it's helpful to tell a compelling story that's data-driven uh, from that constituent state. So um, these are big federal points that we're talking about, but certainly if you could tell a data-driven and compelling story from that individual state, um, then that helps resonate a little bit more and, and kind of uh, presents a more intriguing argument or presentation of information. So would you suggest being quick and to the point? Um, I mean, having a story also is, sounds important. What, what kinds of advice do you have for communicating clearly, getting up there? Sounds like being prepared is important. Yeah. How do we, how do we think about balancing the, the, you know, being quick and to the point, having the three things, but also the story in your back pocket? Well, I mean, that's to me, that's the rehearsal piece. And when we did this the first time with UCA, when we set this up with Sage or, or did some things in Texas, uh, you need to. However, we organize the groups with UCA. Uh, we need to quickly go over our points as a group to say, you take point one, two, three, whatever. And then what compelling story do we know from data uh, from our state? Um, and then, you know, if you have 15 minutes, I think is the, you may have 20 minutes, typically 15. Figure out how you hit those three points within the first, you know, 10, 11, 12 minutes, and then reserve yourself three minutes at the end to kind of go into the story and then uh, as Dr. Horsford said, you know, make sure that you let the person know that you will follow up with a thank you, be appreciative and if there's something they ask you during that time that you do not know, don't be afraid to say, you know, we don't know but we'll get you an answer ASAP and then follow up ASAP with an answer to whatever questions asked. So it sounds like what you're saying is that part of this is not just constituents pleading a case but also being seen as a potential panel of experts for staffers who want to get up to speed on a particular matter is that fair yeah that's that's a that's a fair uh, that's a fair way to describe it uh, you, I think Sonia mentioned it earlier you, you remember they are representing a whole host of issues and so uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, they are not necessarily the experts uh, on, on on these topics, and so for for us coming in, we're doing our part by helping to inform them on a particular issue. And if we can keep them up to date on some of these things, uh, particularly uh, not only at the event itself, not only on the day on the hill itself, but particularly afterwards, uh, in, in terms of a, a constant communication after the fact. Um, that's what's going to be most helpful uh, for, for them. Uh, the way we pr this should probably be looked at is the beginning of a conversation. Uh, hmm. So they're, they're going into this uh, really to, to kind of set the stage um, so that they can put a face maybe to some of the issues so that they can know the, of uh, particular contacts within their district, uh, within their, uh, their area, their state, um, uh, who can help 
uh, facilitate this uh, this conversation a little bit more as well. And then it, it, again, making sure that you continue to to have these conversations throughout, uh, not just uh, once a year. Yeah, uh, I've got a question from a viewer here, um, who's saying. Um, I was under the impression that we will be speaking with senators and their staff and that speaking with representatives was more or less optional. Can you guys clarify uh, this so she can more uh, adequately prepare that is yeah. through the contact? Yeah, I, I can maybe speak from this at least from from my situation. So I think it probably depends on, on for, for different groups, probably your state and how big your state is. You know, uh, with me coming from Iowa, uh, we have a, uh, a small uh, delegation to Congress. We have four representatives to Congress, so um, it, it's really not that difficult for us to, to get around to to a few of them. Uh, matter of fact, one of them, uh, our uh, representative for where the University of Iowa is, uh, sits on the on the House Education and Workforce Committee. So for us, it's important to to still stop into to his office to to meet with him. Uh, but absolutely, it, it's probably most convenient to to just uh, meet with your senators. Uh, but uh, uh, if you have the time and you and you have the relationship built up uh, with your uh, with your your congressman or woman, uh, then by all means, go, I would say go ahead and, and and do that. Particularly if they sit on on, on a committee. But the the one thing I would also just suggest though is if you're planning on uh, going back and forth between the House and the Senate. Uh, <laughs> Make sure that you have given yourself enough time. Uh, actually, depending on how many people you're meeting with in, in general. So, if you're only meeting with two, you should have you know, your, your two senators. You should have plenty, uh, plenty of time, plenty, enough time to do that. Uh, if you're meeting with a couple of representatives as well, too, uh, just make sure that you give yourself adequate time to 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 get through. You never know when there's going to be some school group or, or somebody else also coming in, and all of a sudden you're standing in line uh, behind 20 doctors and and uh, an elementary school and everything else just to get past security. Yeah. I think I think that's a, a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I wrote down some informal things to remember too and just from experience you need to have contact information that you can give first of all. Uh, we were asked during the first day on the Hill with UCA to provide language uh, from uh, Senator Clinton's office for the reauthorization of BSEA. The second is wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> Because you're going to be doing a lot of walking, and I mean, people laugh, but uh, I've seen people uh, really struggle with the amount of travel. And then also uh, prepare yourself with uh, water and snacks because it's going to be a very quick, hectic day, and there won't be a lot of time for stopping uh, and taking care of those types of needs. So preparing ahead of time certainly makes for a happier individual and helps you communicate more clearly once you get an opportunity to speak with those folks. Great. So I have another question from someone who's watching, and they're wondering if the proximity to the election last Tuesday affects or changes the nature of the visit. <laughs> I have visited before, they say, not near an election, and I wondered if the attentiveness of Congress people would change in light of the recent election. Any thoughts on that? It, it, it depends on who your representative is. <laughs> so. uh, and and I'll, I'll use Iowa again for, for, uh, for an example. So. Um, you know, not only that I mentioned uh, one of our congressmen where where the University of Iowa is is, is uh, Dave Lobsack, who sits on the uh, on the House uh, Education and Workforce Committee. Um, so he will still be uh, uh, you know on that committee. It's still important for us uh, to to meet with him. Um, he's in the minority. He's been in the minority, uh, so it it doesn't really change the dynamic a lot uh, coming from there. Um, but uh, on the Senate side. Uh, you know, our, our state senator, or excuse me, our, our, our U.S. senator is Tom Harkin, um, who is is currently the, the, the chair of the Health, Education, and Labor uh, and, and Pension Committee, uh, where, where all the education issues go through, uh, but he's retiring. Uh, and so uh, and so it really doesn't make a lot of sense for, uh, we're going to meet with them, it makes a lot of sense for us to spend time with them, but the dynamic's going to be a little different be different for them. Uh, you know, they're preparing to to exit their office, to transition out. Um, they, they are helping uh, um, helping a, a Senator Ernst kind of transition in as well too. So there is some of that dynamic that is going on. 
Uh, one of the other things too that this may be interesting for some folks, if you are planning on meeting with with representatives in the House, uh, there is orientation going on that week uh, that 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 we're there for for House members. Uh, the Senate's happening this week, so I, I think that won't be an issue issue there. But that's something just to take into consideration as well. Great, thanks. So, just sort of on the uh, sort of to the brass tacks of matters, are there etiquette tips you can give folks uh, to ensure that the uh, members of uh, the legislator receive the best uh, the best receive the, the participants, excuse me. So, I um, mean, you know, are there certain titles that the visitors need to use, any topics they should avoid? I, I would suggest erring on the side of formality um, and addressing them by congressman or congresswoman or representative or if you're talking to staff, refer to them as the congressman or congresswoman or, or the member um, um, to show that respect, um, which I think is important and expected. And so um, maintaining some um, level of formality in the meetings as, as you begin to develop these relationships that you hope to, to foster over time would be important. And yeah. also, if they have leadership positions too, you may want to call them, you know, leader, um, and then their last name. So it's again important to know um, if they hold leadership positions, um, so that you can address them in the appropriate manner. I, I would also suggest too. Just I know sometimes many folks are probably familiar with with Congress from the political side of things, and and typically look at it from from a campaign side of things. Uh, but to remember that we're now in a different uh, phase or a different uh, role, essentially. Uh, so kind of maybe stay away from the political talk, uh, you know, uh, rather positive or negative. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do that completely, but uh, stick to really the issue, uh, the issues, or, or if there's a personal connection, you know, bring those types of light, light-hearted conversations up. But you know, the 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 Capitol or the Capitol offices are are really not the place to engage in, in, in partisan talk, uh, particularly in the offices. So um, uh, that's something else I would just uh, highly in encourage, or discourage actually, to stay away from, from that partisan talk. Excuse me. Yeah. I don't think it hurts. I mean, it does not hurt to uh, to do a little research if you know who you're talking to and ahead of time is to understand what their platform and education policy has been. And so that if you're telling compelling stories uh, to resonate, um, as Isaiah said, you're not telling it from a partisan standpoint, but you're telling <coughs> stories that resonate with something that may they may have supported in the past or is tangentially connected. That way um, uh, you draw them into the speaking points that you're really trying to accomplish that afternoon for UCA. Cool. I have another question from uh, a viewer. If the House members are going through an orientation, should one contact the representative and request some time? Uh, or you mean the, the, uh, the incoming one, like a, a new one coming in? Yeah, so I guess they're worried, yeah, if, if there's going to be competing time, should you let them know you're coming? Uh, I mean, if you have, they're, they're going to be pretty busy. <laughs> um, uh, and so it, it probably depends on the relationship you have uh, with uh, with them. If if you uh, have some type of relationship or some type of connection with them in some way or another, I don't think it, it, it hurts. Um, if you are just planning on being there, and, and you know, sometimes you just may want to go and, and visit, uh, see who are your your representatives and your senators and in, in, in D.C. Uh, you know, they they enjoy meeting you know meeting constituents, and so. Um, staff enjoys, or they know that's their role, um, is to uh, is to to respond to to constituents. That's why they're there. So, um, if you want, uh, if you have the ability to set up some time with them, uh, I would uh, I would encourage it. Uh, but but also just be cognizant too of uh, there's a lot of stuff going on um, already too. So don't be surprised or 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 don't get upset if something just doesn't work out schedule wise. Uh, I think in the um, and the guide that was sent out, the, the UCA uh, PEA Dan the Hill guide that was sent out, there was uh, the top 10 things congressional staff hate to hear. Uh, and I think that's a really good kind of guide in terms of the, the informal things, you know, and some of the things that, you know, sometimes they may not be 
meant to to offend or or to to to, to set the wrong tone, but they can. So that would be a, a good thing maybe to also review. The whole guide is great, uh, but I think that would be one of the things to also review uh, okay. before uh, before going in. Great. We'll be sure to put a link to that again in the show notes. So last thing I'd like to ask you all, and I've heard you say uh, a couple of times that it's important to be ready to do follow-up. So what kind of suggestions do you have for follow-up after the event and to continue the conversation uh, that you start on the Hill? Well, I think that one the reason that we're doing this is to um, help position UCA as a resource, which I think is important. I mean, we work and prepare education leaders, and so being able to make those connections with policymakers and help be a part of that conversation, um, I think is really useful. And one of the ways that we do that is our close working relationships with schools and districts um, and universities. And so even offering to maybe help facilitate um, a school tour or a visit um, with the students that you work with. Um, you know, we, ha we kind of sometimes take for granted those really strong relationships that we have. Um, and members are often spending, you know, a lot of time in their districts. And so offering to maybe be willing to host a, a school visit or tour or a meeting with um, a superintendent or principals um, around an issue, um, one of the issues that we're focusing on as part of our messaging, I think would be a great way to facilitate some follow-up. Um, and future contact. That's a great idea and I would add to that take notes, diligent notes during your conversation. A great way to follow up is you know first with a quick email say hey thank you for your time I really appreciate but then remind them of the conversation that you had and the questions that they asked and if they did ask you follow-up questions that you couldn't answer uh, follow up with very specific feedback as to the answers for those questions. So I think Reminding them of the conversation, rehashing kind of your time, your short time together with them, and then letting them know again that, uh, as Sonia mentioned, that we are a research resource and that we can connect you to not just uh, the research that we do, but the schools that are uh, seeking to better serve uh, their students. Great suggestions. I have one last uh, question from a viewer who's asking, uh, she says, our preparation materials suggest leaving a document describing our university and or the issues we are discussing. Is this recommended or would that be overload? No, not at all. Um, that would be something that they would actually uh, <laughs> really uh, uh, appreciate. I mean, any, any types of uh, information you can give them ahead of time uh, would always be a, a benefit just so that they are, are prepared for, uh, for the conversation itself. Remember, you only have uh, when you actually get in and, and, and meet with the staff or, or meet with the with the member, uh, you, you only have about 15 minutes typically, uh, and so uh, that's that's going to go by pretty quickly. Uh, and if you can give them some information that they can kind of chew on to to help better focus that conversation, uh, the better the better that experience will be uh, on on either end of it. So if you give them some information beforehand, if you give them some information afterwards. Uh, maybe maybe a, a primer uh, to to begin with, and then maybe something more detailed after the visit. That's always a a benefit. Great, great tips, and that's about the time we have for today. So I want to thank you all for taking a little bit of time out of your day to help us prepare for the event on the hill. Isaiah, Sonia, uh, Bradley, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So that's our show for today. Uh, CAFE UCEA is produced by the University Council for Educational Administration Center for the Advanced Study of Technology, Leadership, and Education, better known as CASEL, at the University of Kentucky. <laughs> ben Sheridan, Ryan Schubert of the University of Kentucky, and Aaron Anderson of the University of Virginia co-produced our show today. An archive of this program and the show notes can be found on the Google UCEA Plus page. So for now, thanks, and see you next time.